Good morning, it's Valerie Ling here, clinical psychologist and director for the Centre for Effective Living, answering a question that my good friend Gina Muller posed to me in one of her groups, and I'm coming on live to answer it because, as usual, it's um, there's a simple answer, but then it's usually more complicated to answer. And her question was, how long does it actually really take to recover from burnout? So here is the short answer. The short answer is, if you get in early enough, it doesn't take very long, but it's not going to be a week. I find that the simplest um, parallel to think of is, funnily enough, your dental situation, right? But that is a situation where if you've got the proper hygiene factors going, um, you understand your makeup and you understand the things that are aggravating your, uh, your health, your mental health, and you do something consistently about it, and you get some feedback consistently, then you have some good habits to uh, remedy some of the hygiene factors. So very much like taking care of our teeth, you know, our teeth eat things all the time, things get stuck in it. You need to make sure that your calcium levels are up, you know, there's thinking about fluoride, there's thinking about flossing, and then you go hopefully every six months for your dental checkup, that's what we're gonna be doing on the weekend. And you get this feedback that shapes your behavior. And if you do that and um, you're taking care of that, then generally uh, things don't progress very far, right? It's when you don't have a proper understanding of what's actually aggravating your dental health and you just keep doing the things that you're doing and only when it goes to the owl, fa owl factor, and really let's be honest, um, the owl factor has to be pretty bad that we take ourselves to the dentist and then usually the intervention is probably more significant. It's no longer about hygiene factors. You might have to get a filling, you might have to pull out a tooth, you might have to have all kinds of awful things through canals and from that point the treatment gets fairly intensive and it's focused on treatment and then the vulnerabilities that are left behind you then you have to watch your vulnerabilities so in burnout it's very similar at this point in time the we don't have evidence-based guidelines for the treatment of burnout per se so i'm going to answer the question as best as i can the first thing to say about about it is that when you sat in that state of burnout long enough, meaning the symptoms and your mental health have progressed, that you actually have a mental health issue, diagnosable depression, a mood disorder, a diagnosable anxiety disorder, or a diagnosable physical health disorder like adrenal fatigue, those treatment guidelines take over and the timelines then uh, will be a little longer. Okay, so burnout is progressive. Once you get to the stage where it's impacted your mental health and your physical health, then those treatment timelines take over. And again, it will depend on the, uh, the severity of your mental health. Now, if you are coming in without uh, mental health, in other words, coming in early enough before the chronic indicators of burnout have set in to impact you more fully, then this is my clinical experience. Uh, I say that there's a level one, level two, level three, level four, okay? So level one burnout, remembering that burnout really is the clustering of symptoms in three areas. Uh, number one, emotional exhaustion. Number two, an impacted sense of confidence and achievement. And number three, disconnection with people and withdrawing from community support. So if you've got, if you meet full blown criteria for burnout, it's likely to me from my personal experience and clinical experience, it takes about 12 months to redeploy someone back into their workspace um, in, with clarity and, and um, you know, confidence that those three areas have been looked at, um, restored, and they're on a good pathway now. So it generally takes about 12 months if all three of those areas are impacted. Now, I don't always see clients in the burnout uh, field that meet full criteria in those three areas. Sometimes it's really just the one thing. <clears throat> you know, work is exhausting um, and they're the messages that we are telling ourselves are really undermining our confidence, right? So early stages burnout, <clears throat> possibly even just really one or two areas being significantly impacted. Now, when people come in at that stage, uh, the it's a lot uh, shorter, 
uh, the time that people stay with me because it's more the coaching phase space that we're in. And so if you come in to see me, and this is why it's really important to have someone who understands burnout work with you. The remedy for burnout and burnout prevention and early stages of burnout is quite different from the way that we would treat <clears throat> prolonged stress, depression and anxiety. So yes, rest is important, but we very quickly get to working on which area of the burnout cluster is the most impacted and we work significantly there. It's a little bit like, <clears throat> you know, if you're in an airplane, if you've got two wings, a nose and the tail, right? Um, you could work on all four areas, but maybe one part of the airplane anatomy if you like is more impacted than the other and you'd waste a lot of time actually working on those all those areas but if you know that the main misalignment is in the tail and you work specifically on the tail right lift off happens a lot faster okay so when we work in burnout typically my clinical experience is <clears throat> the first is like a mental health first aid approach you know the first month um, six weeks is about really restoring rest um, reconnecting people with their natural resources <clears throat> excuse me the rest of the time is looking at their relationship with how they're doing work uh, some of the meaning that they have attached to it, purpose, significance, productivity, the degrees to which they can change the way the work environment works. Now, in my clinical experience, um, remembering what I've said, that it's pretty progressive, level one stage of burnout, <clears throat> uh, probably three to six months, and then ongoing work with me um, for, for relapse prevention, right? And in that three to six months, it's really important to actually target the specific area where the burnout leaks are happening. And once we do that <clears throat> and we realign thinking, realign processes at work, realign the way that we're doing work and actually investigate the work relationship, um, people generally start to get a lot better. Sometimes in that three to six months window, it could mean that there is a... a decision that needs to be made do I stay or do I find something else and that in, in, in and of itself is a really important question to address very often I get people coming in to see me with that being the first question on their mind I just need to make a decision Valerie in the next <clears throat> two weeks whether I stay or leave in the job and that's not the best time to make those decisions because you are still in, in a reactive phase imagine if you know you you came in um, <clears throat> like with a toothache and they say to you, you know, I just need to make the decision right now whether I can eat chocolate or whether I can eat, um, you know, a, a heavy biscuit. And it's like, well, it really depends. We have to investigate and see what got you there in the first place. The first thing to do is to soothe that toothache, right, is to figure out how we can get the soothing mechanism going. Now, once that's done, the combination of rest and a few other things that we do, then when you're in a less reactive, uh, agitated, distressed state, then you ask those questions by actually looking at the alignment between yourself and your work, your alignment between your self-organization and all of those things and make a decision, you know, in that time frame. So that is my long answer to the question. And you are right, Gerda, it doesn't happen overnight. It's not like in a week or a day because burnout is a systemic gradual build up of a reaction to someone not coping in their workspace and it's not just about addressing the, the individual mental health issues it's also addressing the relationship they have with their work looking at what is happening at work and realigning that okay hope that helps